Systems Engineer for ScriptLogic Corporation. Today we're going to discuss our Secure Copy 6.0 version. Secure Copy is a powerful and comprehensive migration solution that automates the copying of data between file servers without the use of agents or scripts. Whether you're migrating data, uh, consolidating file servers, or moving to a NAS or a SAN solution, you can easily copy the files, folders, NTFS permissions, shares, and local users and groups without much trouble. In Secure Copy, you have the ability to set up as many jobs as you wish. You can list all of the jobs that you desire. You can break your data down into several jobs so you can migrate it when the time is available. The setting up of the jobs is very simple, allowing you to define a source and a target solution for where you're going to move your data. You have the ability to have a multiple source to a single target or a multiple source and target solution on a per job basis. All of your data controls uh, can be selected through the individual tabs where you'll be able to assign your source folders, choosing whether or not you're going to use the volume shadow copy services on the source systems and then your target system where the data will reside. Again, you have the option of being able to create the source folder underneath the target system whenever you're migrating your data. You can control the operations through whether or not you're going to use your synchronization services. Oftentimes, your data sets are very large and you'll need to move them piecemeal from your source to your target. And that will uh, force you to copy all the files initially. And then as time moves on and you're prepared to switch over from your source system to your target system for production, you may only want to sync up the source and the target files. And with this can be done with a single click of the mouse. You can specify which files to purge, whether or not you want to take away files that have been deleted from the source system. You can also remove them from the target system, whether or not you're going to control your archive bit or reset your last access date to make sure that your source and your target files are in sync by the time you move over to production. You also have the option uh, to override your security permission. This does require you to be an administrator, but does allow you to copy all of the data from your volumes, whether or not you have access to it or not. Uh, you also have filters available to you. In any job, we're all aware of the garbage in, garbage out scenario. So this tool allows you to remove any files that you deem as unnecessary. It could be just the temporary files where you could include uh, any of your music files or other files that will come in the system that are deemed not necessary. You have the choice to include or exclude any files that match the filters. You can also permanently exclude any directories that you deem inappropriate, such as system directories, the Windows or WinNT directory, or the program files directory, for instance. You also have the ability to filter by a specific date. And this will allow you to groom the data as you're migrating it from your source to your target. In this instance, we're choosing only the files that have been accessed in the last two years, leaving all the other files to be archived. And then you have your recursion limitation. Depending on whether you want to migrate the entire data tree or if you want to limit to a certain number of directories below the root, you have the ability to limit which files you're going to choose. Performance parameters are under control with secure copy. You have the ability to verify the copy job. This does extend the time it takes to copy the files, but it does give you a log showing you which files were properly copied. And if there are any failures, those will be of note as well. It is a multi-threaded tool that allows you to select the number of threads, the number of files in a copy batch, and the size of that copy batch uh, before that thread is closed. You do have control over this, and we do set it at the minimum settings initially. Uh, you also have bandwidth throttling, where we can set the inner packet gap anywhere up to 1,000 milliseconds so that you're not consuming your entire bandwidth while migrating files. Any locked files, you have the option to have a retry attempt, where you can retry X number of times with an interval, in this case, of 30 minutes. Uh, the job progress window is automatically presented to the user when the job starts, so you can monitor the job as it's working. However, you can opt to close that window as soon as the job finishes. For migrating local users and groups, this can often be tricky depending on how you're migrating and what you're migrating to. In essence, if
if you're migrating from a Windows server to a Windows server, you may want to migrate all of the local users and groups. However, if you're migrating from a Windows server to a NAS device, local uh, users and groups are not allowed. Therefore, you need to be able to handle them differently. Secure Copy gives you the options for handling all of those scenarios. Whether you want to migrate to local users or groups directly to a machine, you can set the password as necessary. All you have to do is enter the initial password. However, if you're going to migrate your local users to Active Directory, you can easily choose uh, which container within Active Directory that you would like to have the users and groups migrated to. In this case, we can just choose a specific uh, OU and have the users migrated directly to that OU so you know how to handle them. You can also add a uh, prefix or a suffix uh, to each one of the users and groups so you can note that they are a migrated group. Uh, if you're handling your local users and groups and the local group may already exist, uh, and this would not include your built-in groups, you could add the users to the existing group, you can add members of the source group to the existing group, and then you can synchronize the target members with the source members. This would allow you to synchronize all of the group memberships that you have on your source server with the groups in your target server. And again, you have the option to add a prefix or a suffix for all the merged users. In the case of built-in groups, this would be your administrator's group typically, you have the option to attend all of the users from your local administrator's group with the option to not perform that operation. You also have the ability to map any users and groups. And a map file is nothing more than a, a text file that would provide you the ability to state that if this username is being migrated, the new username on the target system would be of a different name. Uh, you have this option not only in the migration of users, but also under files. Uh, under the file shares, if you're choosing to migrate your file shares, if the file share already exists, you have the option to skip it. You can override the old share, and this does re involve removing the old share and then creating a new one in its place. So all of the connections to that old share will go away. You can also add a suffix or a prefix, a prefix or a suffix uh, to the uh, share that you are migrating, and we do support Windows 2003 clusters. Uh, you have other file options where you can map the uh, files, and this would be where you'd want to change a directory name initially. This, again, is a CSV file, very simply formatted, showing the uh, source path and what the target path should be, and we will change that target path on the fly as the job is being executed. You also have the uh, special handling of encrypted files, the copying of subfiles, and you have the uh, ignore the uh, FAT and NTFS time differences. Uh, compression is always available. We can never compress the files, always compress them, or only compress files if the target files are compressed. SID history is, in fact, supported to where you can specify if SID history is being used. We can update the SID history of the users that are being migrated. All of this can be uh, managed through email notifications. Our email notifications give you the ability to have an email sent to you when the job completes or if the job has not completed by a certain time. This would give the administrators notification that the job has not completed and make preparations for uh, operations for that day, given that you have an incomplete migration of data at that time. You can also specify if the job has not completed within so many hours and minutes uh, to send you a notification. Again, this does allow the administrators uh, to be notified whenever a job is going to run slow and could affect production. Once the jobs uh, have been set up and they have been saved, you could easily test the job or run the job directly. A, uh, a test of the job is simply the uh, testing of the access of the uh, files from one system to another. In other words, do you have the rights to migrate those files? So it's going to act as if it's running through uh, a complete job, and it will give you the results of that job based on the performance. This is a very quick run, and it does not touch the target system when that, that job is, in fact, complete. But once the job completes, you do have the ability to look at the job status, and this is, will tell you when the job was complete. Secure Copy offers uh, the comprehensive logging and reporting based on the jobs. For every job that has been run, you do have an individual log for 
that job, the dashboard will give you an overall summary view of what files of what types were moved and give you a graphic showing you what percentage of the job of the files have been migrated in the job, as well as the job speed indicator giving you the megabits per second of the files that have been moved. You do have a summary view of the job as well, and this gives you the ability to look at the job with a little bit more detail than you had on the individual dashboard. The power comes in the log viewer. The log viewer gives you the ability to filter the data uh, either on all of the data that uh, has been collected in the log or whether you want to look at just a specific uh, informational type uh, data. Whether you're looking specifically for debugs, errors, information, or warnings, those are instantly filtered just by selecting this one item in the menu. You can also look at the status of any one of the jobs. Uh, take, for instance, if you just have uh, any kind of information which this job was cleaned, so there is none. But if you want to look at just the copied files, this will give you a detailed view as the files were, in fact, copied. You can also filter by file type. If we're looking for just the docx type files, we can sort just for those file types. And looking at the file types, you'll see each one of these is just a docx. This gives you that comprehensive ability to look for specific file types and the success of those the files being copied over. All of this information can be exported into a, either a CSV or an XML format give it the name of the file where you want it to export, and uh, click on OK, and you're done. You also have the uh, ability to generate a report for this job. This is using the comprehensive report that is available under the Reports tab, and you can grab this without having to shift menus in order to produce this report. That will show you each and every file that was copied uh, via the job. Uh, when you do go to the Reports tab, you do have a number of reports available to you, whether it's a summary report that is going to give you a view of the job as it was set up and did occur. You also have a number of other reports, including the skip file report, the purged files and folders report, which will be important when you're doing a synchronization job, the local users and group report, how many of those users and groups were migrated, any errors during the job, file verifications. Uh, license information and the console server list. These are both for licensing purposes. And then you have the verbose report, which we've already seen in example. 